Hello, in this video, we're going to use the Windows Multimedia API to play an MP3, and it's not so difficult. Um, so you, you can also use the Windows Media Player control, which I do believe is a COM component, but you will be adding a visible control to your form as well, and it's not going to be really reusable code, and you're probably going to have to have an extra assembly in your output directory. This way we're just going to copy or we're going to use pre-existing functionality and interface with the multimedia API. So WinMM, it's spelled incorrectly down here. This is my um, reference project. But WinMM stands for Windows Multimedia and it's a portion of the multimedia API. And we're going to use that to play an MP3. So we're going to start a new project and we're going to build our inf interface. So this is going to be the open button. We need to open a file first before we can play it, of course. And this is going to be the play button. And we're going to add a stop button as well. Okay, and now we can begin making our wrapper for the WinM DLL. So I'm going to add a class to the project. Um, we're going to call it MP3 Player and that's about it so we are going to add a sig the uh, winm signature mci send string this is the only signature of uh, the winm dll that we need to use we'll keep it private and this is mci send string this will allow us to send commands to the api uh, or to the pluggable interface, whatever you want to refer it as, and we can effectively stop and play songs. So we don't want, I don't really know what the return type does here, the, what it returns, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to concern ourselves with the return information of this uh, call here. Uh, as well, these last three arguments or parameters uh, deal with the return information. So you got a call back here and some return information as a string and the return length. We don't really need to worry about that at all. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in here. Let's first add a bool. This bool determines whether or not we are going to re repeat the song after it's finished playing. And now we'll make the constructor the constructor is going to accept a file name, the path to the actual song. And I am going to copy a format over here. This is the format of the open command that we are going to send into the, uh, the API using MCI send string. So this command consists of first the word open then the file name surrounded by quotations and then type mpeg video Elias media file so it's kind of odd that it's mpeg video you can't change this to audio it won't work but it works this way so we're going to construct the actual command using string format of course a lot of the examples will not use string format, and they're actually just adding strings together. I prefer this way. You can better see the command. Okay, now let's call MCI send string. Um, so we're going to pass in our command as the first parameter, the open command, which says that we want to open up a file. And, um, we don't concern ourselves with the return information, so just pass in null, zero, and a zero pointer. 
This is what we're going to use to send messages to the API. Same thing. Now let's make the play method. Okay, here's the command for play. Uh, we actually, I don't really need to put that in its own string. Actually, I do. So we're going to do that. Uh, command is equal to play media player, media file. Okay, now we're going to append to the command if repeat is set to true. So if repeat, then command plus equal to repeat. And we'll use the same code here to send the string. Send the command in. And we're going to do the same thing with stop, something very similar. So this is the stop method. Instead of play, we're just going to put stop here and no repeat logic. Okay, now I'm going to implement the iDisposable interface. And we are going to construct another command. It's going to be similar to these top two commands here. And it's going to be called close media file. And we are going to send it in. Okay. So uh, now that we have everything set up, we can play a file. So um, with the open button here, I'm going to show, uh, oh, you know what, I'm jumping to conclusions. Let's first declare our mp3 player. And when we actually open up a file, we will uh, create our mp3 player or assign to it. So let's show a dialog here. Open file dialog. And we're going to change the filter to mp3 file, which is .mp3 files. And we might want to change its initial directory to uh, a special folder, environment, get folder path. I think, yes, there it is, my music. Okay, now we can show the dialog. And we're going to create our MP3 player now. Pass in our file name that we picked using the dialog. And we're going to set loop to whatever. So, of course, it's a property here for repeat. We can set it to true to make the song repeat. And that's all we need to do for this function uh, event handler here. So let's do an event handler for the play button. We're going to call mp3 player play. You may want to check for null. Or you can just disable the buttons until a file is loaded. And we're going to do something similar for stop. Okay, so I'm going to open up a file here. And I'm going to hit play. And then you can hit stop. The stop command will exhibit the same behavior as uh, the pause command. In our case, it's just going to stop the song at the at a certain spot and then play where it left off. I don't know why it behaves like this. Um, we can use pause as well. Same thing.
it may just because of the way that we're loading the file into the uh, interface, uh, the pluggable interface. Okay, so you may have noticed that once I close the application, the uh, file, the playing file stops, but we're probably going to want to stop it ourselves, dispose of the object, just as a best practice. So go into the form designer and uh, go into the, dis the uh, dispose method here, check to see if we're disposing, and uh, dispose of the mp3 player. And we, we have to check for null, of course because it can be null. Um, dispose. And that's it. See you later.